Okay, so uh, when we come back, we're going to be joined by Dr. Ava Cadell, who's a neurolovologist uh, and a real one. She's a doctor twice, sex and how the brain works, connecting it with love. So, ooh, I can't wait to talk to her. Uh, and we'll figure out what Kyle's problem is. <laughs> we'll get him a girlfriend <laughs> by the end of the show. It's my goal. When we come back after Larry Pearl gives us the, gives us the news on KFIM 640, more stimulating talk radio. <laughs> Lisa Ann Walter and the fabulous Lisa Ann Walter Show, KFIM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Okay, so all of us are looking for love, or sometimes we're in a relationship and we're looking for ways to stay in love, because as I've mentioned numerous times on this show, part of the problem of trying to uh, be in a lasting, hmm, I'm going to say a satisfying relationship because we can be in a long-term relationship, be married, have kids. And you know, there's no major problems, but we have this weird thing where we all expect that we're going to stay head over heels in love. I think our generation is, is different that way. Uh, starting with about our, the generation before us, really our parents. That's why everybody got divorced. Cause it was like, I don't love this person, but I've said for a long time, nobody expected anybody to live this flipping long. People used to die so much earlier. How do you stay in a relationship, keep it interesting, keep it sexy for 20, 30, 40 years? Well, joining me is an expert on the matter, Dr. Ava Cadell, who I met at an event, and I said, we have got to get you on this show. Thanks for joining us, doctor. I appreciate your time. Hi, how are you, Lisa? I am so fine. And you have, I just want to tell the audience, in case they're just tuning in, that you have a doctorate in human behavior and one in human sexuality. You have a private practice in L.A. and you see, I imagine, couples mostly, right? That's right. I do. And do people come in, They on your uh, sheet here it says that people come in to talk about that they can't talk to each other, that they're not interested in sex, which I think is a big problem these days, even with Viagra. It's not a question of that your body doesn't want to. It's I just can't. I can't get it up in my mind. I can't get, get my interest up. So um, power struggles, which I think is very interesting and is probably new to the last couple of generations where couples are looking to see who's going to be in charge and make the decisions, and it starts to, er- uh-oh, there's a, an emergency call for you, starts to er- <laughs> erode the relationship, and, of course, infidelity, which I think sometimes is a result. It's a symptom, maybe not the problem itself. So tell me a little bit about why people come in to see you and how you help them. Well, people come to see me usually when their relationship is in crisis. And the way that I help them is I first find out which part of their brain they use to communicate. Because just like we all have right and left hand prominent, you know, hands, Mm -hmm. we have the same thing with brains. And most people marry somebody with the opposite prominent brain hemisphere. Hmm. But they don't know how to communicate with them. They don't know how to express their needs, you know, their wants, their desires. And so that's the first thing that I key in on is to help them communicate does it with divide, their partner does in it, a language you does, know, so they understand. Does it divide between men and women that, that women are more left-brained and men are more right-brained or vice versa? Or is it really individual to the person? I would say it's really more individual to the person, although long, long, long ago it probably was more gender specific. I mean, a right brain person like myself is usually more creative and kinesthetic, and we like to make a big production out of romance, and we're very touchy-feely when it comes to intimacy. Mm -hmm. But I'm married to a left brain man who's a lawyer, and he's much more pragmatic and goal-oriented, and he just wants to hear the facts without all the little details. That's so funny. But that sounds like most men to me. It does. That they're, yeah, I know, they I don't know. want to hear the story about how you got the sale on, on guest towels. They don't want to hear about how you went to one store and they didn't have the right color. That's what your girlfriends or your gay friends are for. They exactly. and, and they lose the they, they have to follow the breadcrumbs back to the point sometimes when you're telling a story and, and they're trying to figure out is this about the girl at work who stole your yogurt from the fridge or is this about the guy on the highway that cut you? I don't understand where we're going. Help me figure out where so we can land this plane right and and we need to learn how to express our needs 
by using the language that our partner understands. And that's going to help to grow our brain cells as well as grow our relationship. So that's step number one. Now, and that has to do with love. But in sex, is it the same way? Like if you are dealing with a person who is linear and left-brained, correct? Do you say, okay, touch me here? Oh, yes. No, not that Very hard. Very good. You see, you're so good at this. Thank you. Yes, the more specific you, you are. You would think I'd be in a relationship. More, <laughs> the more satisfied you will become. Yes, indeed. I um, see. So you got it. You see, you got it really, really quickly. Now, how do you tell which side the person's brain is? Is there like a little litmus test or is it in one of your seven books? My goodness, seven. Well, it's in my new book in Neurolovology, but most people can pretty much tell whether they're left or right brained, you know, by whether they are creative or more analytical. And then there's more too. There's also modalities that we have, like are we kinesthetic or are we auditory, you know, or are we visual? I've got to, I think I'm auditory. I, I like I think you talking. Are, you love to talk. I bet Thank you're good you. at dirty talk, too, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See? And I like hearing it. Good. Good. I mean, so not so disgusting. It's so easy. <laughs> men like that. I've been listening oh, to you talking about what men like, and, and you've been trying to fix up Kyle. And I, you know, I agree with everything that you say. You are a perfect sex expert. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yes. that. Uh, well, you know what? The thing is, is I think that for everybody, if you pay attention to your partner, it helps. And one of the things that interests me when I was reading about what you do is that you go and speak at a lot of places, religious groups, medical institutes, women's conferences, universities, which I was like, really, do young people need help? And then I thought, my gosh, they need more help than anybody because it's so easy to have sex in with young people these days are, are so eager to jump into bed. They think that the way to be a good lover is you're doing it. You just do it. That's being a yeah, lover, and it's I mean, not. That you just go on no. to the next person, and you don't get good at it. To get good at it, you have to pay attention to the other person. You have to be mindful. And, um, you know, I do lecture all over the world. For couples, I lecture about how to overcome distractions, both internal and external distractions, so that they can keep that in-love feeling. Mm. But with, um, you know, college students, they want to hear how to have a brain gasm. You know, they want the really juicy stuff. And they just eat it all up. I mean, they, they're like sponges. They want to be great lovers. In fact, everybody wants to be a great lover, no matter how old they are or what part of the world they come from. And nobody teaches you how to be a great lover. Just, you know, you just know where to put the, it. The, That's yeah. not enough. No, exactly. Well, I, I've said that for for years that a lot of, and not just not just men, some women too, a lot of women are what we call in the business pillow queens, and they think they just have to show up. And a lot of guys have the idea that there's not necessarily technique, and there is. In the in the uh, generations before us, because they wanted to be good lovers, but they wanted to meet new people, they had to develop oral skills. And I'm, just, I'm talking about kissing, too. Um, oh, when yeah. we come back, will you talk a little bit about kissing and, and being a, a good lover by paying attention? I will give you tips to take home with you. You know yes. what? I just felt our audience double with that sentence. Um, I also want you to talk a little bit about when people come in. You have a book called The Sexy Little Book of Sex Games, and I'm interested in, in how you tell people to or what you suggest in, in increasing their love life, their playful, passionate love life with a long-term partner because that's kind of difficult these days when you're in a relationship for 20, 30 years plus, Right. Right. Absolutely. you got to be creative. Okay. We'll talk about creative and kissing and all sorts of sexy secrets when we come back with Dr. Ava Cadell on the other side, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Lisa Ann Walter on the fabulous Lisa Ann Walter Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. We're on with the author of Neuroloveology. I think that's the title of it. Dr. Yes, Ava Cadell. Is. Okay, good. The power to mindful love and sex. Okay, so a couple of things we want to know. First of all, you said there are actual tips about kissing and sex that you could share with us. But before you do that, you're going to make people wait for it, which I think is part of really good sex, too. You can't just jump right in. I've been I've been touting the virtues of good long makeout sessions for a while here at KFI, and all the dudes argue with me, Dr. Ava. What do you have to say to them? They're lazy. Lazy. <laughs> lazy. Thank you, doctor. You're lazy. 
Here I am trying to sell new Kyle and get him a date. By the way, ladies are responding. They want to know how old he is. He's 25. And Ronnie Louisa just uh, Facebook messaged me and said that I was responsible for pushing her, her towards getting hooked up with Rob Archer. She said, I am a great matchmaker. I should be a professional. So there you go. Uh, so tell us, what is the secret of kissing and, and being a mindful lover? Well, first of all, there are millions of nerve endings in the brain devoted to the lips. So passionate kissing is an essential part of achieving a brain gasm. And during a long, wet makeout kiss, adrenaline makes your heart race. And it also, there's, there's the release of dopamine from your brain. And that's the, you know, that's yeah, from that's the reward stuff. center of your brain. And women especially get really turned on by kissing because men transfer testosterone through their saliva to women. Ah. And that is the sex hormone in both men so and that's, women. And that's also uh, good to know about the um, <clears throat> uh, making a foray uh, orally elsewhere. I'm trying to say this in a delicate way on, yes. on yes. the radio. <laughs> yes. I'm it, saying it, that you take little trips. <laughs> Right, right. South. But yeah, <laughs> south. But it all starts north. I mean, for a woman, sure. well, for a woman, everything starts between the ears. The brain is the most erotic. Of organ. course. And so. Okay, let's but, talk but about kissing. kissing. Let's talk about kissing yeah. real quick because let's get specific. People say, well, I, I kiss. So interesting because I've always been told my whole life I'm a great kisser. Now, I'm starting off with a pretty good apparatus. And that's courtesy of my ancestors. I didn't invent these lips and I didn't buy them. They're about my, my immigrant ancestors gave me big lips. But I think that if you pay attention to how somebody likes to kiss, you're a good kisser for them. Cause there are some people that really like to mash their lips together and kiss really hard. Other people like to do the thing where they suck the top or the bottom lip and other people like little nibbles. But I think most girls don't like when you take your whole tongue and you shove it into her mouth like an invading army. I, I mean, maybe at some point you can do that, but like you shouldn't start with that. Am I right? I, I agree. And I've actually had couples come to see me who are completely incompatible when it comes to kissing. Interesting. So what I have them do in my office is I tell one of them to pretend that they are the writer, director, and star of a hot, steamy movie and that their partner is the co-star. And so they have to give him, usually it's him, she has to give him um, a kissing scene to perform on her. Mm-hmm. and really tell him how she wants to be kissed and to make it sort of an Oscar-winning kiss. Um, because a lot of guys just don't know. They just shove their tongue right in there and start, you know, exploring. Roaming around. around. Yeah, when in fact, women need to be prepared. They like to have baby kisses yeah. around the cheeks. And and they like to work up to juicy, hot makeup. I think that's a good tip for everybody. I'm not a doctor, and I don't have any letters that say that I'm an expert you're at this. you're a good kisser. Thank you're you. You're a good kisser. And yeah. I am. And I think that that is a good rule of thumb for all sorts of activity is to start little and then grow it. You know, start on the outside, work your way towards the juicier bits. You know, do, I and think. And use your whole body. Yeah. You know. Oh, but back of the neck. Hair. That's a good place, too. Yeah, and, you know, caress the body. I mean, don't just grow, go straight for the butt or the boobs, but really, you know, really be ro- feel they, romantic. They do. All the guys near are smiling. I'm like, usually it's when you're washing dishes or something, too, and they just come up and honk. You know, you're like, come on. <laughs> It's true. And now the other thing is that gets a woman's juices flowing is when you look at her, when you open up your eyes, that releases oxytocin, the bonding chemical, and that increases her desire to have sex with you. So if you kiss her and look at her, that's going to really turn her off. Interesting. Okay, now what about, because we don't have enough time, and you're going to have to come back on with us because you're delicious, in more ways than one. You're a great guest. But what uh, is the secret when people come in and say, okay, we're bored, we've lost the, the urge to have sex, how do people get interested again? 
Well, they have to put more fun and playfulness into their relationship. And that's where I help them to create more fun and flirty games and dates and just add more flavor and diversity into their relationship. And and that can be uh, in sort of the little games. I guess that's part of your sexy little book of sex games. But uh, people can come up with their own, right? Well, they can. But, yeah, I give them hundreds with, with food and foreplay and fantasies and role-playing and kissing games. And, you know, I have a myriad. You just of listed like five things. of my favorite things in life. Yes, exactly. Food, kissing, fantasy. I love all of that. That's fantastic. Now, what should Kyle do in the last 30 seconds that you're on? What should Kyle do if he wants to find someone to, to date that he has a good time with? Well, I think he should go where he's outnumbered by women. <gasps> That's step number one. Yeah. So Kyle should go for a manny and a petty. Oh, Kyle, we're going to hook you up with some girl uh, excursions. Okay. Yes. Or a yoga class. I like you yoga, know, some, actually. He I does really like yoga. Yeah. Okay, maybe a naked yoga class. Do you know where we're on? Where's a naked yoga class? <laughs> Don't you think well, that's embarrassing for Matt? I know there's one in Jamaica. Oh, okay, well, we're not going to fly him to Jamaica. There is a, there is a budget here, Dr. Hamill. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a, a budget. budget. I didn't know that. I, so maybe just go to a regular yoga class. <laughs> okay, he'll get naked by the end of it, probably, if I know Kyle. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Ava Cadell, who's authored the new book is Neuroloveology, The Power to Mindful Love and Sex. Yes? Yes, thank you, Lisa, and I hope I get to see you at my book signing at Diesel Books next Sunday in Malibu between 3 and 5 p.m. Well, we will put a link up to that on our page, and we'll have you back on because you're fantastic. Thank you. All right, Good darling. luck, Kyle. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Hi, now. Good <laughs> luck, Kyle. Yes, absolutely. Well, we've got a couple of ladies interested in Kyle. When we come back, we will be joined by Glynis McCants, the numbers lady.